How many of you know we're going through regeneration? You don't know yet? Oh. <laughs> regeneration. That means God's trying to bring things anew. That means that he's preparing us, and there's something that you and I must do, and everything that we do do, is to make sure that we maintain a newness of life. Everyone say newness of life. You know, people begin to compromise after a period of time. They become lazy, complacent. And, and in that, and I've shared before, there are many homeless people, but there's people that have homes that are still homeless. Because you're homeless without God's presence. Amen? You are homeless without the presence of God. And in this, God is trying to keep us in a place we are maintaining the newness of life. What an, what an awesome thing. Life. New life. You know, we started off with that song, A New Lease on Life. Man, I'll never forget my new lease on life. Because I went through hell. Lived in hell. And occasionally enjoyed it. Until it began to bite me. And burn me. And lie to me. No matter what I did, I couldn't break through. But thank God for praying mamas. Hallelujah. Praying grandmothers. Hallelujah. <laughs> and praying individuals. I'll never forget one day when my dad called me and he said, I want you to know somebody called me and said, they're praying for you. I just gotten out of prison. Just getting ready to go back into prison. <laughs> but I lived a life in prison. Because without Christ, you're in prison. Amen? God makes a way of escape. When he did finally rescue me, I asked him, what took you so long? <laughs> then he began to remind me of all the times he gave me opportunity, but I rejected it. <laughs> you remember this? You remember that? Oh, yeah, right. Remember that bumper sticker on that car? <laughs> yeah. Jesus saves? <laughs> I didn't believe it. But thank God he had to show up to tell me. <laughs> I believe it. Always will believe it. Tr cherish this new life. Don't neglect it. It's precious. It's eternal. It's not temporary. The world still lives in a temporary realm. They're looking for fulfillment in the world. The world will never fulfill you. Only the presence of God and the knowing who you are. See, that's the first thing the devil comes to steal is your identity. If he compromises your identity, he's got access in. That's his job. He does it very well. You know, it wasn't that I didn't believe that there was a God. I did, but I never knew him. In fact, I used to do drug deals and go, God, help me. And I think he did many times. Because he didn't want me dead. He knew if I died in that condition, I wouldn't have made it home. But he was faithful even when I was faithless, gave me opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. And this morning I got up, I just thought, how precious this life is, this new life. With no fears, worries. Don't care about dying. Don't care about anything. Just want to live a life that pleases him. And so grateful for everything he's given. And he's not done giving. Because <laughs> he brings life and life abundantly. But it's not what he gives. It's where it comes from. The great giver. Amen. Just to know who we are in this new life is something that you and I must maintain. Because the enemy likes to compromise that. Nullify it. He likes to get us distracted in the ways of the world. Put false things in front of our paths. False fulfillments. Puts people in front of our paths. Puts money in front of our paths. Puts all kinds of opportunities in front of our... Anything to prevent us from getting that new life and maintaining the newness of life. You know, when people buy a car... We'll get to it, okay? When people buy a car, <laughs> they love that car. Oh, man, it's a great car. It's nice and shiny and clean, you know. They bring it home. They, they drive it. And 
They make sure it's washed and clean. What are they trying to do? They're trying to keep the newness of it. They get the oil changed. If it starts making a noise, oh, they bring it to the mechanic doctor. They want to make sure that it stays and maintains a newness because it's a reminder. That fresh smell of a new vehicle and so forth, not a smoky one and you know, fresh leather, you know, whatever it is. But it, there's an, an essence in that newness. And there's an ens essence of God for me and you that he wants to keep everything in the newness of life. That life that he gave us. He wants to keep it refreshed all the time, activated. Because the enemy's going to try to nullify it, deactivate it. Amen? Newness of life. Romans chapter 6. Hallelujah. So he wants to keep you polished and clean. <laughs> He's a great detailer. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 1, let's speak it together. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into death? Therefore, we were buried with him through the baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the what? Newness of life. For if we had been uni uh, united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. In other words, he who has died to yourself has been freed from sin. Now, if we died in Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he now lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey in it its what? Lusts or desires. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you are under the plan of escape, which is called grace. So God always brings us a plan of escape that's called grace. That's the plan. But the problem is if people are not cooperating with the plan of escape, they stay in the life of sin. Not realizing that they're actually going through hell before they get there. It's a terrible life to live. Everybody okay? So there's an area of the level of death that is equal to the level of life. The more you die to yourself, the more life you have. Everybody got it? We are not under the law, but again, under the plan of escape. That puts us in the newness of life in Christ Jesus. We want to continue to stay in that place of newness by keeping the new life alive and activated all the time. Alive and activated. Matthew 5. You know, there's a lot of things going on in the world today. We know that the powers of darkness are on the surface more than ever. Influencing, calling, causing destruction. You know, <laughs> the devil came to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. If you find yourself in that arena, you know that you have open doors of the enemy. Amen. So in this, because of the things that are going on in the world right now, and things are going crazy, and more and more things are being exposed, it's time for me and you to be that light more than ever. 
We must maintain the newness of this life to shine forth, no matter what's going on. Again, we're attached to eternity. The world is not. Amen? In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13, Let's speak it together. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor or if it loses its newness, does everybody get it? Because when something maintains a newness, it's got a special taste or a special smell. So it says here, if the salt loses its flavor, I call it, or newness, how shall it be seasoned? It is then no good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but a lampstand, on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to what? Fulfill. For surely I say to heaven and earth pass away, one jot and one tittle will by no means pass away from the law till it is what? Fulfilled. In this, we see something very powerful. We say it's to be the salt, the newness. Let your light so shine so that the world can see. In other words, we are now expressing the joy of God's presence in us. See, your labor toward God is a witness to everyone else. How you labor unto the Lord. If you're a grumble or complainer, you ain't a very good witness. You know? It's, you just can't, how can a, a grumble or complainer be a witness? Everybody's got a, everybody's going through stuff. Amen? Praise God. Welcome to the go through stuff. Everybody goes through it. But praise God, go through it. But count it all joy when you go through it. Why? Because God's just trying to expose your impurities. He's trying to expose your enemies. We all go through it. Why? He wants us to get to that place of maintaining a, a continuous place of newness. Newness. It's like going through the car wash. Every time you're going through something, thinking about going through the car wash. God's trying to clean something up. But he's got to expose it because you're the only responsible one to clean it up. Amen? But he wants you to cooperate with the cleanup. Amen? He's got a special Holy Ghost closet with all kinds of cleaning tools in there. Romans 12. So next time you're mopping, just remember that. <laughs> Romans 12. Newness of life, precious life. In verse 1 and 2. I beseech you. In other words, I beg you. <laughs> Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or responsibility. And do not be conformed back to this world again, but be transformed by the what? renewing of your thoughts. So if you're the renewing of your thoughts, is there a renewing of life? Yes. Without renewing, there's no renewing. That's real simple. Do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind or your thoughts that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renewing of thought bring to remembrance, but we're refreshing of the promises of God and the newness of this new life. He has granted me, you and I, knowledge, mysteries. We have access to all the hidden things of heaven to renew us on a constant. Keeping it alive. We're keeping things alive in our heart and in our mind. Why? As a man thinks, so he is. And the heart is expressing all its desires. You'll know an individual by what their highest desire is. Amen? In Titus chapter 3, newness of life.
Titus chapter 3 and verse 4. Yeah, we could start at verse 3. Titus 3.3. 3. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness of the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. So there's a process of the regeneration, washing of the regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Process of regeneration, process of renewing. We talked about this before. Whom, <laughs> through the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I want you to affirm when? Continuously. That those who believe in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Now, in this, the regeneration process and renewing process by the Holy Spirit is to position us to be refreshed in the newness of this new life. He says, do this continually. Continually. In Acts chapter 3. That's why it's important to assemble. Amen. He says, forsake not to assemble. Come out from among them and be separate. Bad company corrupts good habits. You know, everything that usually happens to you, you bring on yourself. Most of the time it's because of disobedience to the things God is. Listen, counsel, correction, and direction brings protection. Amen? To be unprotected is a terrible place to be. I mean, I thank God for prayers. And he answers prayers. But when we were in a fallen state, how many people did not make it? Amen. Many people did not make it. You never know when God's done answering the prayer of a mother or a friend or a father. And then it's over with and it's too late. In Acts chapter 3, I remember when I did get saved, my neighbors behind, came, behind me came by. They were wheeling a child. And I came out and the child was ill and I think we were having a yard sale or something. And I said, hey, can I pray for your child? The woman almost passed out. She goes, you don't know how long I've been praying for you. I heard that music every day. <laughs> your house is nothing but a roadhouse. Limousines, motorcycles, this, that, whatever, up and down your, in your house. I knew what you guys were doing in there. My husband and I just prayed for you and prayed for you. I said, well, praise God. God answered your prayers M amongst many others. Acts chapter 3, verse 11. But if he finally said no more, I'm not answering any more prayers, I wouldn't be here. Amen? And many of us wouldn't be here. You never know when he's going to stop. In verse 11. Is everybody there? Acts 3. Now as the lame man who was healed, held by, on by, onto Peter and John, all the, uh, uh, and all the people ran together to them. And in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look at the intently at us as though by our own power or godliness. Everyone say, my own power or my own godliness made this man walk. See, so many times we look at us. Well, maybe I'm not godly enough or womanly enough. or Maybe I don't have enough power. Maybe I'm not filled with the, filled with the Spirit. Maybe, maybe, maybe the maybe syndrome. But there's something that he says here which is very powerful. He says, listen, 
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the Just One and asked for murder to be granted to you in his place and killed the Prince of Life, the Life Giver, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. What made the man strong? The belief in the name of Jesus. Whom you see and now, yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all of his prophets, that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, turn away, therefore be converted in your soul, that your sins may be blotted out. And so that the time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. In other words, in the presence of the Lord, when there's refreshing, there's renewing. There's renewing. You know, every time before we get together, we should always be repented of anything that we've done. Lord, forgive me before I come into your presence today. Amen. Again, it wasn't not their own power or godliness, but by his name, his life as the life giver, he healed the lame man. He says, repent, then an opportunity to be refreshed. These are opportunities to be refreshed, renewed, reconnected <laughs> in the newness of life in Christ Jesus. All the time. All the time. Every day. You know, there's two things that should be on the tip of your mouth all the time. Repent <laughs> and praise his name in everything that we do. Is everybody okay? Newness of life, Ephesians 5. Newness of life. Ephesians 5, verse 8. Hallelujah. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. See, if you're not willing to expose them, God will. That's why people go through trials, tribulations, and all kinds of stuff. Because God's trying to expose the unfruitful works of darkness. For it is shameful even to speak of these things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't be drunk with wine, in, which is in dispensation. But be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In that we stay filled, refreshed, renewed, in the newness of life eternal, by the singing in, in our heart, the things that come out of our mouth and praise. What does it say? Con continue to have praise out of your mouth. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's allowing the Lord to keep us. In other words, what happens as we continue to do this, we're taking a step off the plan of humanity. Always taking a step off the plan of humanity and stepping into eternity. There's a plane of humanity. There's a plane of eternity. We're stepping off that plane into another realm. See, the world is still here. We live from the future, not from the past. When Jesus comes, he's coming to take a blameless bride. 
He's not coming to take a believer. He's coming to take a follower. Amen? One that's blameless, upright. One that knows him. Remember, he said, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord. And he's going to say, I don't know you. See, there's a lot of people out there that know about Jesus. But they're not willing to follow. And it makes it a, a tremendous difference. In Colossians chapter 3. We want to step off the plane of humanity and carnality in the newness of eternal life all the time. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Good. Let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, your thoughts on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life, who when Christ who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So if Christ is not your life, are you going to have a newness of life? No. He must become your life. Ooh. Verse 5. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon these sons and daughters of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free. But Christ is all and in all. There's something very powerful. He says, put on a new man who is renewed in the knowledge. In the what? The knowledge. Where he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So in this, we are reset, refocused, amen, and renewed in the knowledge of Christ, who is our life giver. We want to keep this continually. That's why many people cannot, you cannot get renewed without reading the Word of God. It's impossible. You can't get renewed without being in God's presence. It's impossible. That's why when many people that are still out there that still call themselves Christians are living outside of salvation's truth because they're not participating with Christ's requirement. And the requirement is just to keep us protected. Amen? So we can make it all the way home. Isaiah 40. Hallelujah. In verse 28. Isaiah 40, 28. Everybody there? Praise God. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the what? To the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength because he's a good daddy. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, but the young men shall utterly fall or fail. But those who wait on the Lord, those who wait on the Lord, that's an area where we seek the Lord. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not that's renewed strength. 
and in the power of the newness of life eternal. Renew. Renew. Always renewing. Refreshing. Going through the Holy Ghost car wash. Amen. Go to uh, 2 Timothy 4. I think that's it. How many of y'all know we're in the last days? If you don't, you know now. You can't, you can't deny it. I mean, look what's going on all over the world, man. You know. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Is there perilous times? Hey, man, you got it. There's perilous times in the world, but not in the kingdom. See, there's a difference. Living in the kingdom, the perilous times are out of the kingdom, not in the kingdom. Because there's peace, joy, and righteousness, prosperity, multiplication, and fruitfulness in the kingdom. But out of the kingdom, there's perilous times. It says here, for there will be lovers, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, and without self-control, brutal, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of good, God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people do what? Turn away. So there's going to be many of them. Why? They've never, some of them were born again, saved, filled with the Spirit, but they never maintained a life of renew. They were never willing to renew. That's like renewing a contract, you know, or a lease, you know. You got to renew that lease. You got to put a signature on it every certain period of time. But for me and you, it's an everyday thing. We want to stay renewed in the newness of this life. We must stay refreshed, renewed in everything, reminded reconnected and everything that we do other than that when we begin to backslide you might not know it but everybody else does amen why attitude mouth desires remember you'll know by somebody by the, what's their greatest desires what are their desires oh, i want a job i want money i want this i want that i i i what about being a servant in the kingdom what about promoting the kingdom Amen? So we see these are all individuals that either have, these, they've never been renewed or they never got into Christ from the beginning. But most of them are backsliders. In Ephesians 4. Jesus rebuked Israel because they're, they're Perpetual backsliding because they were, would not let go of deceit. They held on to lies and deception. Oh, hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 17. Is everybody there? Praise God. I'm glad one of you is there. <laughs> Tough crowd this morning, I'm telling you. Well, let's speak it together. Verse 32, or verse 17, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you woke up on that one. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, speak it with me, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their thinking or their minds, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Why? Who blinded them? Satan's kingdom. He's the prince of power of air. Who being past feeling, hello, have been given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. He says, but you've not so learned Christ. You've not been renewed in Christ. If indeed you had heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? You put off. That you do what? Put off concerning your farmer, former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, 
that you put on the, the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Powerful. Walk in the newness of life. Therefore, putting away lie and let each of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we, were members, we are members of one another. Be angry, but don't sin. Hallelujah. And don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands. What is good that he may have something to give him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. What's the, these are guidelines he's telling us, man, you... This is what's going to prevent your renewing or steal your renewing. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Walk in a newness of life eternal. Psalm 40. Psalm 40. Newness of life. In verse 1 through 3, I did what? I waited patiently. In other words, I endured patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and he heard my cry. You know, sometimes a cry is out of the heart. It's a prayer that's really out of the heart. Amen? Sometimes people just pray to get prayers up. But when there's a cry out of the heart, it's different. That gets God's attention. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit and out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man who trusts in the Lord and does not respect the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. And your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. So there's something very powerful in here. He says, I've given, given us a new song. A new song with a renewing. Do you ever notice that when a new song comes out and it just hits you? It's like, whoa. And it kind of refreshes you and renews you. It's like, yes. Or that same song over and over. I can play songs every sometimes continuously. The same thing over and over and over. As you well know. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I, I came from a ministry that uh, uh, miracle signs and wonders. And uh, uh, that pastor of that ministry, man, he played the same songs every time. When, when it was time for miracles. When it was time for healing, he played the same song. And, and I've known him for 25, 26 years. And every once I go see where he's at, he plays the same song. <laughs> but God moves. There's certain songs that move the heart and God moves, you know. So don't grumble and complain when you hear the same songs. Over. Pray for new ones. <laughs> and don't send them to me. Romans 8. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Romans 8, verse 12. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. 
But if the, by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons and daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of, of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption where we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we what? We suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now listen, when you're really born again and you're walking in that state of being and you're renewed, this scripture right here is profound and absolute. For I consider the suffering of this present time ain't worthy compared to what I'm going to. Amen? To where I'm headed because I'm heaven bound. It don't mean nothing to me. Amen? Doesn't matter what's going on. I'm heaven bound. Verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Even all God's creation which is corrupt is waiting for the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Everything's being turned over to us. And listen, we are in that process right now. Remember, the world is passing away. Everything's becoming new. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does still one hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance or in endurance. Only by getting off the plane of car carnality into the plane of eternity will be a, renewn, a renewing or a newness of life in Christ Jesus. That's our responsibility. Amen? Then I'm going to close with 2 Corinthians 5. Newness of life. But we were washed in regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Glory. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ. That's active. That's alive. Amen? That's newness. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has been given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing the trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors. Everyone say, I'm an ambassador. For Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. As a new creation maintained by the refreshing, renewing, of the newness of life in Christ Jesus, so the world will see him in us. That's his purpose. Things will get darker. But we'll be the light. We're going to shine. We'll be coming. So many things are getting ready to be released. You know, there may be a short period of time we're coming to, or there might no, not be any electricity. There might not be anything. But we're to be prepared for all things. Amen? Darkness must come before the shift of great light. Amen? Remember, Jesus is getting ready to come soon. But he's coming through the body first. 
before he personally comes. He's getting the bride ready to be removed. But he wants to harvest. He wants as many souls as possible brought home. And he does it through his body. Amen? So you're just not a nobody. You're somebody. Amen? You're in the body of Christ. So Father, we thank you for your word and the newness of your life in us. We are honored and we are so blessed. And the precious life that you've granted us is awesome and we thank you. Let us not take it for granted. We are your temples. Let us maintain these temples as a living sacrifice to you. To serve you, honor you, and express you. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen.